Hi, my name is Liz Hathaway and this is my astrological look at the week ahead. This is no ordinary week because tomorrow Uranus will move into Taurus. This is a major astrological event. Uranus has been in Aries since 2010. And so although my videos are short, I want to give you some of my ideas about how this might manifest. So the quickest way I thought to do this would be to look at the actual ingress horoscope for uh, Uranus into Taurus. Because if you look, for example, at the ingress of Uranus into Aries, just take a look at that chart, and it seems to exemplify crisis. It's a full moon uh, in Sag, the sun in Gemini. Uh, we have Pluto in early Capricorn, so it's clear when Uranus comes into Aries, it's going to be uh, having a major face-off uh, with uh, Pluto, which we know bring, uh, brings about deep changes in the psyche of countries. In fact, it changed the, the seven-time Uranus-Pluto square. It has pretty much revolutionised uh, our world. And we saw first the huge banking crisis, the major shift in um, how wealth is distributed in a way, a lot of pressure on um, people who are less well-off, uh, it's just been a, a strange time, the Arab Spring, Uranus in Aries, of course, the lone wolf and, and acts of terrorism and this sort of fear factor which has entered into the psyche of many of us in the West. So it's interesting, if you look at that chart, to compare it with the, trans, uh, the, the Taurus ingress. I'm using Greenwich as uh, my location here because, interestingly, uh, the whole idea of the Greenwich Meridian comes uh, was, you know, actually, uh, certainly the, 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 in the UK, the Greenwich Meridian came into effect uh, with um, Uranus uh, in Aries. And it was um, really uh, introduced by the very appropriately named uh, George Airy um, in 1851, to be precise. So it's as good a place as any, I think, to locate this chart. What the chart uh, shows is a very strong earthy component. It's a new moon. Uh, the Aries ingress of Uranus, it was a full moon. This is a new moon. And it's a new moon in Taurus. The moon is exalted here. So it's, ha this chart has a very feminine feel to it. Mercury is also in Taurus. But then Venus is the ruler, of course, of Sun, Moon and Mercury uh, and Uranus. She's in Aries, uh, sorry, in Gemini. She's uh, unaspected, she is out of bounds, and she is conjunct the galactic centre. So this is a very strong, powerful female energy, but it's unpredictable. It's not uh, obeying the laws of the sun, if you like. She's out of bounds, she's heading in her own direction, she's unpredictable. She is certainly um, putting a very strong stamp on this early move of Uranus into Taurus. Interestingly, there's a strong reception between Mercury and Venus. So this uh, sort of adds as well a little bit of um, colour to the chart in a way because they, Venus and Mercury are actually supporting each other here. They you know, can support each other in getting a new message out there, a new message of femininity, a new... Um, in fact, one of the things I think is very likely now with Uranus in Taurus is that we will have a third feminine wave that women will be much more outspoken, that they will be much more prepared to uh, um, not only engage in dialogue, but where necessary, also uh, be prepared to take direct action and to use any means available to them, including possibly their bodies, to make a point. So this is a very strong sort of feminine feel to this chart. The sun and moon are, well, certainly the sun and moon have trined Pluto, but Mars as well here, you know, this is Mars, uh, the feminine planets uh, with Capricorn don't do so well. This is where the moon is in detriment, for example. So Mars here, the very edge of Aquarius as well. The first contact Mars will make when it moves into Aquarius is a square with, Tor with Uranus in Taurus. So this is a huge chart. It's a very uh, feministic chart in some ways and a very earth oriented sort of energy. What do I mean by that? What might earth oriented actually mean? Well, in one way, I think we might see, certainly among younger people, a tendency or a slow move to uh, return to the land. 
I mean, the sprawling cities and the um, what we could call the gentrification of cities uh, are leading to a, a lot of young people being able to find a house or be able to afford a house or being able to really settle properly in a way that they would like to if they want to create families. So with Uranus and Taurus, we might find a move towards a simpler lifestyle and a reassessment of what's important, what life's real values are, because Taurus is, of course, very much a sign that is related to our values. A film comes to mind that was um, that came out when Uranus was in Taurus the last time, and I'm talking about Citizen Kane. At the time when the film was made, the director, Orson Welles, was really young. I believe he was in his mid-twenties. He is himself a Taurian. So we have this theme running through Citizen Kane, which is a film which is acclaimed and often on the number one spot of the best film ever. It's very much about what does it profit a man, you know, to, if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul. This is like the thread that the story is trying to say. And it's about there are values that reach beyond the spiritual because Uranus is about the sky. He's a sky god. This is where our gods live. This is where our spirit is. This is where we can reach uh, heights and be inspired. So we're going to be inspired, I think, by something much more physical. So if we look at the internet, which um, one of the things I think the internet will change, there I've done a post on this uh, quite recently, is the idea of pay-as-you-go or services like Facebook being much more, um, yeah, in terms of uh, value, wanting to offer value for money. Because I think, um, as the CIA has recently discovered with its hack, there is no support. It's free service, so there's nothing... You know, there's no necessary, no necessity, shall we say, to provide any type of help desk or any real substantial practical, which is a keyword for Taurus, help. So these are things that are going to have to change. But I also think people will be looking to connect not just in um, cyberspace, but they will actually be wanting to connect in physical space, you know, to actually meet each other and touch each other and have some kind of physicality. So I think uh, another um, thread you could see running through this um, is concern for the earth, earth conservation, and also animal welfare. I mean, Taurus is a bull. He's a, a four-footer, as we say. So it's about how we treat animals, how we deal with them, how we, um, in fact, exploit them. And I think animal activists as well, with Uranus and Taurus, are going to come out of their corner fighting uh, this is going to really transform our attitude to meat, for example, and to what we put into our bodies. So I think the whole physicality of Uranus will, uh, will express itself in changes in lifestyle. Again, referring back to women, because women are very strong in this chart, it's a very feminine chart. We could also see, um, for example, um, uh, because Uranus in Taurus, we know this is connected to the rise of fascism. And if we look, for example, at how Hitler approached women, uh, women were breeding machines, in fact. Hitler was uh, prepared to give financial, if you married, you got a thousand marks, and for every child, a loan of a thousand marks, and every child, you got 250 marks. And if you had eight or ten, you got a gold medal. So this sort of fertility and control over fertility and uh, women's fertility uh, and ideas maybe that are uh, more ideological, which would like to perhaps um, get women back into the kitchen or um, or might uh, sort of uh, romanticise, particularly now with Neptune in Pisces, sort of romanticise the uh, notion of uh, women as homemakers, as, uh, you know, breeding machines. Uh, but, yeah, this, this, these are sort of ideas that Uranus and Taurus could uh, actually uh, really uh, bring up. So it's, a, it's an interesting chart with Venus out of bounds. She's unpredictable here. This could be a powerful new female artist. This could be, uh, you know, new, um, an evolution in art, a new... Um, uh, what shall I call it, a new movement in art. If we look at the pre-Raphaelites, they were, um, although they were also very much about romanticizing the image of women, there was also, um, 
you know, the, it was nonetheless a new a, a new movement drawing on ideas of chivalry and, um, you know, um, the idealization of women. Because with Uranus and Taurus, we do really have to be careful with anything that, you know, reeks of ideologies. Because we've learned the lesson of the past. Hopefully, that we can get very fixed um, ideas coming out of the collective at this time. But generally, I think for women, this is an interesting this is an interesting chart for women astrologers, for people with a message. Again, that mutual reception between Mercury and Venus, communication. This is there's a lot of peace and talks and dialogue in this chart. What we can also do with it, of course, is link it up to other important charts. Um, there's some interesting links here, for example, with the chart of Donald Trump, just to take one example. But um, a powerful ingress chart, which is bringing in a lot of um, appreciation also of inwardness, of the landscape within, the earth that we also are, and honouring that. Thank you for listening. Have a great ingress tomorrow. Bye.